YouTube, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host CKK and we are back with another video, guys. Okay, we've got a 4K Blu-ray player here. We went with the Panasonic DB-UB820P-K. This is in black. My assumptions, because it specifies that it's black, that this might come in other colors. I don't know. Um, this player is not a brand new player. It's not a new piece of technology, but it's definitely new into my situation. Now, I took to the community tab a couple of days ago and, um, you know, I asked what you guys' opinions were. I seen that some people were saying, hey, go with the 9000 model because it's the higher end. But there doesn't appear to be any different video fidelity upgrades going 9000 versus this particular model here. This unit, I believe, offers the best bang for the buck in the space of giving you everything that you'd be looking for, right? So we got the high dynamic range formats. Um, it's 4K. This obviously has the ability to be backwards compatible, so to play Blu-rays, to play DVDs. And it also has some streaming functionalities too also, but I'm not, I'm not interested in using this for Netflix or anything like that. Let's talk about the expectations of this video. So we're gonna we're gonna unbox this thing, okay? And we're gonna get it set up into my uh, TV stand situation. I bought a couple of new longer cables so that I could manage my wires. I had a subscriber that asked me on the S95B video that I posted yesterday if I would consider going a little bit deeper into like what my audio configuration is. So this video is gonna have some timestamps. This is the expectations right now. So you can utilize those timestamps to maybe get to a bullet point that is of interest to you. We are gonna go about talking about this. We're gonna get it set up. We're gonna do initial impressions. We're gonna talk about my audio situation, if I wanna make any changes. We're gonna get all this content going, guys, right after this intro. Right, man so here's a look at the box um nothing too fancy right specifies all the different things we talked about 4k high dynamic range hdr 10 plus dolby vision which isn't working perfectly on a95l which is going to be my main driver for this but does work nonetheless so we're going to just go ahead and get this thing cracked open now um i personally have been living off of plex it has been working wonderful for me just because there's so much content that I like to watch all the time. Um, I don't have the biggest collection of um, media by, by way of disc. And that doesn't mean that this changes that. It just means that there are some pieces of content that I think deserve to have a uh, physical version, right? Okay, so unboxing is simple enough. We're gonna go right into this. This is all gonna be one transition for you guys, okay? So we're gonna start off with the remote controller. Model IR6, pretty much a baseline remote. It's got number pads, everything else on this thing. So that's that. Batteries for the remote does have a uh, polarized power cord that's separate, which I do like. It's very good, very thoughtful. We've got the manual here. And what kind of tape did they put on this? Good God Almighty. Okay, this is cardboard here just to protect the manual, so that's pretty awesome. So we got the manual there. I don't think I'll need to read much of this, but uh, it does come with the manual. All right, and the player itself, nice little decent weight to it. Here's a look at the back. If you see port connectivity, you just take a good look at that. I 
Also, this has a uh, front drop down, so you can take a good look at that. All right, so uh, this is pretty interesting. It's got a USB-A there. Got the disk drive that is covered. It's pretty awesome. And the top has push button for power on and off and to open and to close. Interesting. Okay. Mine has a uh, marking that says September 2023. Obviously, this is still being produced. But the one thing I'll say about something that's so old, what you like about it is that it's still being actually made. Like, there's not just a million of them made and you're just kind of stuck with whatever the product, right? Because, I mean, they could come with revisions. So it feels pretty good. This is not actually textured. The top looks textured. Um, I'm not sure if this ultra hd blu-ray uh phase or not this is just me doing my my one and done of being technical of it bottom of the player i mean got panasonic on the front um yeah so that's the unboxing of this thing let's get to uh getting it set up all right guys so i want to spend a little bit of time on this timestamp fulfilling a request subscriber made in the comment section talking about <clears throat> my setup Okay, so 77, 895L. We've got this on a Sanus um, table uh, base swivel mount. So has the ability to swivel that way, that way. Um, so you can kind of do what's needed with that. Um, what's powering my speakers? Din and receiver. We got 970, I think it's the 970H. Um, if that's not the correct model, I'll uh, I'll get that corrected for you guys. So we got that, and uh, we've got a clip set up. This is the uh, baseline reference set up. So the center, we've got left and right towers. Uh, these are the 8-inch. So these are the better of the, the baseline reference. And then, excuse me, we've got two 12-inch um, subwoofers, right? So two 12-inch subs. Um, when we turn around, we've got two bookshelves also. So that's, that's kind of how this works out here. <clears throat> is it the best? Nah, not at all. But is it good for me? Yes. Is it what I could afford? Yes. Um, I'm very happy with the way everything sounds. Okay. Like super immersive. Um, and then I'm not like. I'm not having distortion come from my content, even if I'm playing it at a high frequency. So I think I've got everything calibrated to where it sounds good for me. And so I'm enjoying it. That's what's important. So this is my audio. Um, so uh, right now, what I've got going on is I've got an RCA, I'm sorry, an HDMI running to the television directly from the receiver. So that's the ARC, um, and then I've got everything routed into the receiver. Matter of fact, one second, let me get down here. Yeah, this is a 970H, okay? That was bugging me not knowing which model this was. All right, so we've got a Nintendo Switch. We've got an Apple uh, 4K TV 2022 model, and uh, we've got an, a gaming PC. I've removed the PlayStation out of here altogether. Um, and then, you know, we've got family controllers, Lady Hera, um, KJ, and uh, Lessie's controller, my controller for Nintendo. And then um, I've got my, uh, make sure you touch the screen. So, yeah. Um, and he said, oh, the Sony's overblown. It, it's not better than the Samsung. The, the G-Forces are, are too highlighted. Nah. Um, yeah. And then I got an Xbox controller because I do have a gaming PC in here. So what I'm about to do now is I purchased a couple of uh, 12 foot HDMI cables. <clears throat> I got a pretty clean install going right now where you really can't see any wires. I've got uh, the, the, a, the, the HDMI going from the receiver up through this base and 
kind of routing in that direction. Well, I'm going to get everything connected to the TV. Uh, I'm going to leave the switch down to the receiver. But the Apple TV, the uh, 4K Blu-ray player, and the PC, as well as the receiver, are going to be the four ports that's going to the TV directly. Uh, I don't have a PS5 in here. I don't have a Series X. And I don't like having things go to my receiver. Now, this is going to be another timestamp. So there is a issue I'm having with my receiver. <clears throat> and uh, I want to just take a second and discuss it. I thought about making a video and I'm, I need to do firmware update. I also want to say that I have an Ethernet switch inside of this TV console. And so everything pretty much is hardwired in here. I have a consistent, not intermittent, but a consistent white line that will come up here. It's not on the TV, it's on the receiver. Because anything that I'm doing, it happens with the receiver and happened with the S95C2. This is just one of those things, you can have a seat. These guys have been standing up listening to me talk for like, what, five minutes now? Yeah, so. Um, <clears throat> when you're running things through your receiver, there's a couple of things that you've got to be conscious of. If the board on the receiver goes bad or has any type of problems flickering or like this little white thing that I'm talking about. Um, Lady Hera even noticed it last night was watching an episode of The Walking Dead, Daryl. And uh, it just it happens all the time. It's like it's not it's not nothing that destroys the picture, but it's just like I don't know if I need to update the firmware on a receiver or if the board is bad on a receiver. But the simple fix of it is just run my shit to my TV, let my TV do what it needs to do. So that's just some extra, you know what I'm saying? Something to be conscious of. That's also why champion get a warranty, get a warranty on your products, man. When you go to paying eight nine hundred dollars for a receiver this thing's on sale for like five and some change now but you get the point where you spend all this money on your products get yourself a warranty because if your stuff is not functioning exactly how it's supposed to it needs to be repaired or you need to have an option to be able to go to something else um but the receiver's fine and i love it i really do and i love the way everything looks um so the blu-ray player is going to go right where those controllers are so, um, you know, we just unboxed this thing. So I'm thinking I'm going to set it right in there and I'll get these controller figures in here. Um, but I'm going to set the Blu-ray player right above where the receiver is at. So hopefully this just kind of helps you to understand what I've got going on and the thought process behind what I have was affordability and how good does it sound to me? It sounds great to me. I have a partial open concept going into my kitchen for my living room because that's what this is. This is not a theater room. This is a living room. And it sounds freaking amazing in here. It does. Um, but yeah, that's what we got. We're going to get this install going and we'll be right back in the next transition. All right, team. We got some uh, cable management work done. So uh, let's first just start with uh, what my vision is, right? So down here in this area, of course, I went, as you can see, I figured do my Stormtrooper and my Vader controller holder on there to the right because I already have the children's, the children, um, their Nintendo Switch controllers and such. <clears throat> the Switch is running to uh, the receiver directly. It's the only thing running to the receiver. Above it, we're going to have the Blu-ray player. Um, a little bit closer in here as you can see we've got the hdmi cable as well as the power cable going over to the left we've got the apple tv um uh, position there so i got an opening here for me to be able to put like my arcade stick <clears throat> so uh this is a good quality look at the tv base from sanis yes very clean um it's got my positive negative there for my center channel, I'll give you guys an overview when we're done. And then uh, a look at the back, everything we've got back here. So got this routed. Hopefully you guys can see this uh, pretty good. So everything into the TV. Um, so we have as follow, port one, gonna be Apple TV, port two, Blu-ray player, port three, 
ARC and then port 4 gaming PC and got some nice cable management there it's really dark back here so sorry not really prepared to to show that <clears throat> in the best light but uh yeah looking pretty good looking pretty good right here so far I'm loving it let's go ahead and get the rest of this uh put where we need it to be all right guys here's the money shot yes the money shot man got everything conditioned where I need it to be arcade stick down there so I can get busy I don't know if you guys remember when I painted this wall to add a little bit of character and pop. I went with a purple because I knew I wanted the clip speakers and I wanted that gold kind of like the Lakers, that purple and gold. But yeah, man, we got the player in there. <clears throat> Gaming PC is over here. Now that's the height, Y60. It is elevated off the ground and the power supply is actually up above. It's in the middle of the case. So that's kind of incognito. So that's sitting there. Got Ethernet running to it, HDMI running to it. Everything condition. Give you guys a little 360 work. Seasons changing, so I gotta get some more raft flooring, throw blankets on my couches. We got a little bit of physical media. And we've got the surround sounds, got all the remote. I'm not a fan of having this extra remote there, but keyboard mouse air purifier got that extra surround there so yeah <clears throat> pretty simple but it's home yep that's what we got going on so it's gonna be a lot more content coming and the motivation behind this was um yeah this came out right and i've owned Literally, I've owned every version of this movie um, that has been possible. <laughs> Seriously, I have. B from a video game, VHS, some CD, DVD. I still got the old DVDs, man. I still got the DVD that has, like, the old Best Buy skew on it. That's another one there, too. Anyway... I'm going to get into doing some baseline reviews of some movies, talk about some clarity, quality. This will take me down a rabbit hole of finally getting some Dolby Vision content played on the channel. So I think the last thing I want to do for the TV is probably get the Hue Sync going. Um, Get some illumination going in here just for that extra kick of immersion. But um, this area looks really good and I'm happy for it. All right, guys, we're going to get ready to conclude this. I am so excited about the fact that my uh, TV remote actually navigates and controls this thing. I did the entire setup using the TV remote. So this is great, man. I was sitting here thinking, like, I'm going to have to find me like a Logitech. I know one of the uh, advantages to going with the 9000 model of um, this Panasonic player is that it has a better remote, but I'm not a fan of having multiple remotes. So this thing has been able to control and function the TV, obviously, the Apple TV completely, like in all totality. I can, I mean, obviously I can't do like Siri or whatnot, but I can control, navigate the Apple TV and now the, the player, like I can control everything with the player. Um, so this is this has worked out to be really really well. Um, the player is nice. Uh, menu seems very fluid. Um, hasn't been any kind of crazy latency trying to navigate around. I do have it connected to the network, and uh, haven't ran any movies yet. And I know that I can't really run any content with copyright issues. Probably going to do a small short review of Street Fighter, um, maybe for the channel. I don't know. I might do something for this um, but I'm not going to run any of this but this is what I'm getting ready to kind of play around with that's what I got for this video hopefully I answered some questions brought you in a little bit closer to my lifestyle and what I got going on and if you enjoyed this vlog be sure to 
leave me some thumbs up. Let's have some engagement, some conversation. And uh, I'm going to catch you guys on the next video. Peace, God bless, and as I always tell y'all, Max Love. Thank you.